Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Steven. I'm back again with another tutorial. Uh, sorry it took me so long to, to get back with another one. Uh, school has basically, you know, sucked my life dry. And uh, a few weeks ago my computer, well, actually on, on uh, winter break my computer blew up. And so I had to wait to get, you know, enough money to buy parts for a new computer. And then got everything installed and Camtasia has been giving me shit for the past, few, past week. And finally figured out what the problem was. So... Now that I have a quick second, I you know can uh, uh, do something a little quick here for you. Um, this tutorial is just going to be a, a quick little simple um, modeling tutorial. Um, turns out what I'm going to be doing, um, a lot of people don't really know uh, the right way of doing it uh, or doing it properly or even knowing how to do it at all, which is, I, w I was quite surprised. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is um, attaching um, two pieces of geometry together, two two polygons, and that's not the part that you know people don't really know how to do. People know how to you know attach two parts together, um, but what it is is attaching a circular object like a like a cylinder and a uh, let's use a plane, like a cylinder and a plane, attaching them together. Um, and keeping some good geometry, good edge flow, and uh, keeping it nice and neat. So uh, let's get started here. I'll, I'll show you what I mean, and um, I'll give you some uh, really good tips and pointers that uh, you know you're definitely going to want to want to use while you're modeling. So let me start here with a uh, new polygon plane. Uh, grid snap it, and I'm going into the inputs and subdivisions width and height. I'm going to make it three by three, and the reason being I'm doing this is so that I have you know one square in the middle, and that's where I'm going to be putting my, uh, my cylinder. And what I usually like to do is I like to turn on uh, wireframe unshaded, uh, so when I'm don't have my geometry selected, I can actually see what's going on. Okay, so part two, we are going to create a cylinder and grid snap, so we have it in the center, and bring that up. Okay, so we have the uh, polygon plane uh, divided into nine portions, uh, three by three, and it's lined up perfectly so that the center point of the polygon plane and the center point of the uh, cylinder line up. Now, what I'm going to do here, um, a lot of people don't uh, don't think of, is that when you model, you want to start out really incredibly simple. Um, so say this polygon cylinder, um, we need to add some extra geometry to the polygon plane in order to match up with the cylinder. So the cylinder has 20 edges going around it. Well, that would mean we'd have to, you know, add on 20 vertices going around uh, the center box here to line up with the 20 edges on the cylinder. So that could be obviously a pain in the ass, especially when you start moving things around. Um, when you smooth it out, you'll get flat spots, you'll get um, uh, pinches and, and stuff like that. It won't look pretty. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to start with the lowest amount of geometry you possibly can survive with. And with a cylinder, it's actually, if I remember correctly, it's five. Um, you can use five edges. And let me constrain the top corner here. Oh, it's an animation menu, so let's go to my polygon menus. So let me add an edge loop, insert edge loop up to the top edge here and we'll do it to the bottom edge so when I do a smooth preview which is uh, number three you'll see that you know I get a cylinder although it, it shrinks down a little bit uh, compared to the the size of a uh, uh, 20 edged cylinder it's still a cylinder shape and that's just a lot less math for uh, my to calculate and I can't believe I'm already at four minutes I was hoping I could keep this under ten minutes um, well, this is good info for you guys to use, so yeah, it doesn't matter. So let me actually go back. Now, I'm not going to use 5 here because if you take a look, um, there's uh, four, there'll actually there'll be four vertices on your uh, uh, square here, on the, on the um, center square where we're going to be attaching the cylinder. And uh, we want to keep it kind of even. So we can't use four because then it would be just a four four edges for the cylinder because then that'll be a rounded square. Um, 
can't use five because that's not really even with four. Um, the next one up would be six edges, which is actually exactly what I use is, is six edges. And I'll, I'll show you in just a second. Let me just undo. I'm going, undo, undo. There we go. So subdivisions axis. I'm going to turn it to six. Now if we go back to our top view and take a look here, we can see, I select and go to our vertices, we can see that this vertice here would line up here, this vertice line up here. There will be a vertice to go for each corner. All we have to do is worry about the vertices uh, going through this center, this center line here on the x-axis. So all we have to do is just you know put one vertice here, one vertice here. And we can do that really simply just by inserting an edge loop. Um, you could also do it by uh, um, the split polygon tool. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is just insert a vertice here, vertice here, because that would make uh, these faces here. Let's actually turn my shading on for this one so you can see. And turn on wireframe on shaded. Actually, you're not going to see it because I have to lift this above the actual grid line so you can see it. There we go. Okay, so it will turn this face here into a five sided. Uh, polygon because we'll have a uh, vertice here and that will split this edge into two so we have one two three four five we don't want that so we'll just uh, go to edit mesh insert edge loop and when two edges uh, meet each other you'll get a vertice at that point so now we have vertice here vertice here and they line up with the uh, edges of the uh, uh, cylinder and so we have six vertices to line up with the six edges and let's go back to our polygon cylinder and bring it up a little bit. so I had a vertice selected okay and the next part we want to do is remove the uh, uh, bottom faces actually the end caps I guess if you want to call them of the cylinder and the reason I do both end caps is, well, number one, you got to do the bottom end caps. And the reason I do the top end caps is so when I'm looking through uh, the top view, I can see through it and there's no other faces in the way. Okay, so let's just go back to our object mode. Now, the thing we have to do in order to attach the cylinder to the plane is we have to get rid of um, the faces that are on the plane. So get rid of the center ones. Come on, select. There we go. Okay, and at this point, all we have to do is let's move my cylinder down and take the um, the plane, select its vertices, select a vertex, and hold down the V key, and you're going to vertex snap to the adjacent uh, vertices on the um, cylinder. So when you hold down the V key, you can see the uh, the square turns to circle and you have to hold it down you can't just press it and let it go you have to hold it down and snaps now the thing is on a vertice snap I'll show you what happens here it'll snap to the nearest vertice so if I'm here and I go over here it snaps you know people start freaking out because they're moving their you know cursor around nothing happens well you have to move closer to another vertex in order for it to snap to that vertex it's not going to slide over like you're doing a curve snap or something so now we have all those snapped together. Go back into object mode, select both objects, and let's go to mesh combine, edit mesh merge. Okay, and well for this part we have our two objects merged. They're they're one solid piece here. <coughs> now if we do a smooth preview, we see we get, you know, this big heavy curve here. And that's not something we want. We want them to look like two pieces are attached together or maybe welded together. Um, we don't want a really hard crease, but we want a little bit of, uh, of uh, a, a joined crease in there to give some specular highlight. So I'll show you what I mean uh, in just a second. Uh, one Another good tip is when you're modeling, I've got about 10 seconds here, so um, go to assign new material, select a blend, and the reason being is when you select a blend you get that nice specular and you will be able to see any type of uh, faults or um, mistakes 
that you might have with your geometry because the specular highlight will hit it and it'll show up immediately.